Good day and welcome to Interview, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Jacques Kingston Compton. With me today is Project Manager of the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, or ORTCP, Dr. Lorraine Nicholas. And Dr. Nicholas is in our studios today to speak on various activities and projects aimed at improving parts of cast trees. Now, Dr. Nicholas will briefly tackle all these programs as much as we can, uh, one at a time. Let's start with the William Peter Boulevard. What are the plans for the boulevard and what recent activities has the project undertaken towards achieving these improvements? Thank you, Mr. Compton, for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here at the GIS to share some insight with the public on the work of the ORTCP. Mm -hmm. The William Peter Boulevard, as you know, is a central part of the Castro's Business District. <clears throat> it is a location that attracts a significant amount of pedestrian traffic. It is easy to find, it is easy to navigate, and it is also in close proximity to one of our major cruise spots, which is the Place Carinage. So the fundamental aim is to really make the, the William Peter Boulevard a more pedestrian-friendly space, a space that is more conducive to relaxation, a space that is more conducive to hassle-free shopping. So a place where locals and visitors can go and sit and enjoy local cultural entertainment, as well as dine, have a cup of coffee. The underlying aim is to bring more money into the economy so that we can benefit more from the tourism sector. So what, what exactly would the improvements entail, aside from attracting more businesses, as you say, to the area? What physical sort of improvements would, you, would be undertaken? So currently, we are at the stage of preparing the option designs for the boulevard. So we have engaged the services of a consultant firm, a Barbadian-based firm, with also some local experts. So we have an engineer on the team, Adrian Thiebels of St. Lucian. We have an architect, Sean Compton. We also have a social and economic specialist because we are not only focusing on the infrastructural upgrades, but also looking at the economic and the social implications. So the consultants, who were engaged in March of this year have now completed the first phase, which is the diagnostic assessment. And this assessment entailed basically assessing the quality of the urban space. So looking at the architectural features, the mm -hmm. topographic features, um, basically looking at the competitive positioning of the boulevard relative to other spaces in Castries. They also did an inventory of the buildings and the businesses in the boulevard area. We also did surveys of various groups of persons who use the boulevard. So the vendors, the taxi operators, the business persons, and general pedestrians who use the boulevard. And these surveys, in addition to giving us demographic information, also gave us information about the socioeconomic profile of persons who use the site, the hours of use, what those persons felt about the boulevard, and we have also conducted a series of consultations with vendors, taxi operators, business persons in the boulevard to acquire insight on how they envisage this improved boulevard to look. So I am saying this, Mr. Compton, to say that we are not at a stage where we already know what the improvements will be. We are at a stage where we are gathering information mm -hmm. from the public so that their vision, their aspirations and desires for the improvement of the boulevard would be considered. Some of the other things we considered are the traffic flow, the parking. Mm -hmm. Many people tell you, well, if you are going to pedestrianize the boulevard, what would happen to parking? Because parking mm -hmm. is so limited in Castries already. So these are the, some of the things that we are now discussing, that we are now assessing, and um, we have completed this assessment. Okay. And now I also understand that you have another set of public consultations scheduled for August 7 in Castries and August 8 in V4. What will be discussed during those consultations? Yes. So this would be sort of the third set of consultations. And we are at a stage now, now that the consultants have compiled all of this information they have gathered regarding the focus group meetings, the inventory of the businesses, the assessments of the actual physical site, they have now gone back and sat and put together the conceptual designs for what the boulevard will look like. 
-hmm. Now, they have put together four option designs. We could have asked the consultant to just give us one design based on mm. what was discussed and all of the insight they have acquired, but we thought that it would be more democratic if we did four option designs for pedestrianization. Mm. Now, we speak of pedestrianization. I think it is very important to basically say what this is about. It essentially means restricted vehicular traffic. As I said earlier, we want the boulevard to be more pedestrian friendly, mm. a place where pedestrians can do hassle-free shopping without having to worry about vehicles going up and down and maybe um, even knocking them. So the idea really is to pedestrian the, pedestrianize the boulevard, which means restrict vehicular traffic. So we have four option designs. One option would obviously be full pedestrianization. Mm -hmm. So in that case, there would be no vehicles allowed mm -hmm. to move within the boulevard. There are other options. Perhaps it could be now we know the boulevard has two-way traffic. It could be a scenario where you only have one-way traffic going up and not two-way traffic as currently obtains. It could be pedestrianization at various hours of the day, early in the morning, on a weekend, etc. So we are going to present four options to the public at those consultations on the 7th and the 8th and allow them to discuss it and select the one that they think is the best out of the four. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. We're due for our first break. This is Interview, a production of the Government Information Service. We'll be right back after this. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to be heard. This means that every consumer who is dissatisfied with a good or service has the right to lodge a complaint to the provider of that good or that service. This should be the first point of lodging a complaint. Ensure that the receipt, as proof of the transaction, is available. Welcome back to Interview, a production of the Government Information Service. Again, I am here with OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project Manager, Dr. Lorraine Nicholas. Uh, now we were speaking about the improvements to William Peter Boulevard and Castries and V4 and all that. I want you to briefly talk about the Facade Improvement Program. Uh, recently, your project hired a, a grants manager to oversee the Facade Improvement Grants Program for certain parts of Cass Streets. So could you tell me what this Facade Program entails? Yes. So I have looked at a number of shows like DBS's um, Street Vibes, where a person talk about the unsightly um, appeal or lack thereof of the facades or the storefronts in Castries. And this project, as you know, is a tourism project, but it is also targeting our locals. We want the city of Castries to be more aesthetically attractive and appealing to locals first and then to our visitors because currently, increasingly, every year we have hundreds of thousands of cruise ship passengers for whom Castries is the first point of entry. Mm -hmm. However, a significant majority of those visitors do not venture into Castries. Uh, some of them say it is because it is, it is difficult to navigate to get across from the port area to uh, the downtown area because of the, the traffic in that area. Some say because it doesn't look appealing, there is nothing of interest to do, see, or buy. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is to upgrade the facades or the storefronts in Castries, in the Castries Business District, to make them more aesthetically attractive. And to do so, under the ORTCP, we will be, the government of St. Lucia, um, given financial incentives to the property Owners. So this would be in the form of matching grants, 50-50. Um, mm. The idea is that a business would put some of the funds and the government would put the other half of the financing, ranging up to 10,000 US dollars. And one mm. might ask, persons might say, why, why doesn't the government give all of the money? Well, it is a case where you would not want this to be there to be interest simply because it is free money. Persons see it as free money mm -hmm. and so they jump on board. You want there to be a level of ownership that persons see that there is value in doing this, it is their building, it is their property, this is what is being developed and the government is contributing to it. So um, 
Some of the objectives of this project is to enhance the viability, the economic viability of the businesses by enhancing their attractiveness and their appeal. In addition to that, we are also looking to restore and conserve the historical value of some of the buildings in Castries. We know that many of the buildings have a lot of historical value and we want to maintain and retain this historical integrity. Um, so this is the objective of the program. There are some projects that are eligible, some that are not. So we are looking at very moderate upgrades. So we would not be doing major infrastructural or structural upgrades. So if a building needs painting, deep cleaning, installation of, of, of the signs, if there needs to be a removal of any barriers to accessibility mm -hmm. so that persons of all abilities, persons who, are, who have physical disabilities can access the site, this would, be, this would be done. Looking at the installation of gutters, the installation of awnings, um, mm -hmm. exterior lighting to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So these are just some of the things that we would be doing under the Facade Improvement Program. Um, the Boulevard Consultants, are, uh, Mr. Sean Compton, the architect on the team, mm -hmm. would be doing the designs for the facade improvements. But it is not a design where every building in the, in the area would look exactly the same mm -hmm. because all the buildings have their branding. So Digicel has its red and white, Quartz has its colors, Scotia Bank has its colors. And so it is just ensuring that we have a level of, uni not uniformity, but harmonization and, and coordination so that maybe all of the signs may be put in a certain way, maybe the utilities may be erected in a certain way just to enhance the general appeal of the area. And when do you expect to launch the program? So we will be launching the program tentatively on August the 21st, I believe. We were still confirming the dates with the minister, mm -hmm. but this is the date we're looking at, the third week in August, to really launch the program. As you said, Mr. Compton, we have hired a grants manager who's very enthusiastic and ready to start the program, has already started um, doing some groundwork with the businesses, basically sensitizing them about the product, about this program. Okay, and we are coming to the end of our program. Is there anything else that you want to briefly speak about before we go off air? Well, I want to say as well that one of the other initiatives we have ongoing in Castries is the rehabilitation of the sidewalks. The sidewalks are a major issue, the conditions of the sidewalks. So we have consultants who are just about finalizing the designs for the sidewalks and the streets targeted are, we're looking at Jeremy Street, Bridge Street, uh, Labry Street, Pena Street, 7th Street, the John Compton Highway starting from Lucilek into Jeremy Street, um, Bridge Street, did I say that, Brazil Street as well, Mikud Street. So these are the streets that we have done the designs for the sidewalks. And um, in addition to that, I would like to end by encouraging the St. Lucian public to really come out to the consultations that we have arranged for next week, Wednesday, and next week, Thursday. Thursday will be in Viewfort at mm -hmm. the Binfield Comprehensive Secondary School and Wednesday on the fifth floor of the Finance Administrative Center in Point Seraphine Castries, right next to the Fisheries Complex. Um, it is an opportunity to give their views and we would like as many views as possible. And um, in addition to that, we also intend to put it online so that persons have an opportunity, they can't make it to the consultations, to view them online and to give their feedback as well. Well, Dr. Nicholas, I want to thank you very much for coming, our, coming on our show and discussing with us the future of Castries as well as Viewfort. This is Interview, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm your host, Jacques Kingston-Compton. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned to more programming on this station.